It's time to check in with our media partners from the voiceofoc.org for an update on what's happening this week in Orange County government and politics. And here to talk about the issues in the news right now, we welcome the editor-in-chief for Voice of OC, Norberto Santana. How you doing, Norberto? Ed, and thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. All right, we're going to start uh, just right off the top. We want to go over to the Orange County Register. They have altered their ad policy after complaints from Anaheim politicians. Break this down a little bit for us. Uh, blogger Jason Young is sort of at the at the heart of all this. What what happened? Jason Young and his uh, blog uh, Save Anaheim has been waging a campaign against uh, Disney-backed city council majority in Anaheim for some time. He's been very critical of their plans to grant a $158 million tax subsidy to a hotelier in that community. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Young had an interesting uh, approach and he started to run local ads in the Anaheim Bulletin, which is owned by the Orange County Register. The ads were very hard, but also very factual and pointed out that a local judge had indeed ruled that the, uh, that the uh, subsidy that the council members pushed through was illegal because it wasn't properly noticed. Apparently, though, when he ran that ad, council members went to the new owners of the Orange County Register and complained that the ad was unfair. After that, he started getting emails back from the advertising department that basically told him that because of the heat from Anaheim City Council members, the adverti the, his advertisements could no longer run in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. uh, the owner of the register did speak to us and confirmed that they had indeed changed their ad uh, policy now to restrict any ads that attack politicians by name. Obviously, it's raising a lot of questions in the uh, media community and in the broader Anaheim community about freedom of expression mm -hmm. and how that works in an advertising-driven media. That's not totally uncommon, though, for, uh, a, for a newspaper to take a stance on what kind of ads they, they will and won't run. Is it, is it uncommon, though, to delve into the world of politics? Well, you're right. They do have, uh, newspapers have the rights and have had it for many years to dictate what ads uh, are run into the newspaper and what not. Uh, what really this raises is when you're in, engaged in speaking truth to power, the big question there is, is, is that a venue that you'll be able to use? And it looks like in Orange County, it won't be. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. Supervisors look to bring um, Santa Barbara CEO down. Um, her name is Chandra Waller. Okay, the the supervisors are dancing around this entire question of, of how much her salary will be, and that raised a major ruckus down there. Oh, yeah. This turned into a huge uh, uh, issue at the county earlier this week. We broke a story last week that identified Santa Barbara CEO uh, Chandra Waller as being courted by supervisors. Because of a new state law passed after the Bell scandal, uh, they came out and had to do some of these negotiations in public, although it was an incredibly ugly discussion. Uh, union members came down and started protesting the fact that they had heard that supervisors were going to boost the CEO's pay in order to cover a new requirement that they pay for their own pension requirement. That drew a hugely uh, terse reaction from Supervisor Todd Spitzer. Let's hear his reaction to union leaders. I agree with that. But I don't appreciate being accused from the dais of potentially trying to walk into a violation of the law or incentivize somebody to circumvent state law. When you hmm. Uh, union leaders went right back at uh, Supervisor Spitzer and said, you can get as offended as you want. These are the allegations that we're making, and they didn't back down from them. Here's uh, Nick Berardino, head of the Orange County Employees Association, went right after Spitzer. Uh, yes. Do I think a scheme will be concocted? Yes. Yes, I'm saying so. Do I believe previous schemes have been concocted? Of course. These are the issues that come out and play again when you're negotiating large salaries. I think the, the base salary there is $254,000. And again, the big issue in all public agencies is having employees pay for their portion of the pension benefits they're receiving. Hmm. I'm sure we're going to hear a great deal more about that in a few, a few days for sure. But Janet Wynn, one of the supervisors, uh, like so many politicians, she's terming out of her office, which means she'll run for another public office. Uh, what's the latest from her? Uh, Janet announced earlier this month that she is going to uh, run for the 34th State Senate District. That's held by uh, Senator Lou Correa right now, a Democrat. Uh, when a Republican, a Vietnamese Republican, is certainly that party's best chance to run a competitive race in central Orange County. The big question that uh, kind of haunts her uh, political future are these uh, grand jury reports that have come out on her fundraising in the health care uh, agencies. Um, uh, the big question for her is two more reports are coming out 
Supervisors are in the midst of trying to figure out how they respond to those reports. It's a split supervisors on it. Two of them don't agree with how she's run the agency. The others do. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out moving forward. Mm -hmm. Normally they're quick to, to jump in on something like this. What, what's holding them up? Well, the problem is they don't know uh, how to address it. Uh, by law, they have 90 days to make a response to the grand jury report. Earlier this year, uh, or last year, Supervisor Sean Nelson and John Morlock both protested the changes that were made to, the, uh, to Cal Optima, the uh, county's managed care program for the elderly and poor. Uh, the problem now begins is how do you draft that report? And usually it's even done by a CEO, which that office is left vacant now. And, They'll slug this out over the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about the importance of this because you're, you're talking about her running for another office. And, and some of the competition she has, you know, is going to be all over this. So how, how do you see it shaking out? Well, that's going to be the difficult part. In some cases, this is a policy debate that they're going to have. However, it's going to have political implications for her. Uh, we know that former State Assemblyman Jose Solorio, a Democrat from Santa Ana, is poised to also run for that seat. So that's going to be in the background. Ironically, all of the supervisors are Republicans, so they are, in a sense, going to uh, have a debate amongst themselves on a policy issue that could really hurt her chances to run for office. So we'll but, see again. Uh, well, and not all of the supervisors voted for her. Is that correct? I, Absolutely not. Two of the supervisors, Sean Nelson and John Morlock, were very opposed to the changes that she uh, has implemented at, at Cal Optima. One supervisor, Bill Campbell, who's no longer in office, was a steadfast supporter of hers. Pat Bates is also a very strong ally of Janet Wynn, and we'll have to see how that shakes up. A lot of it will come down to the new supervisor, Todd Spitzer, and see how he decides uh, uh, how that agency is to be to run and what type of critiques they accept from the grand jury. And also remember this, the grand jury got so ticked at uh, Supervisor Wynn for taking issue with them that they have now told Supervisor they have two more reports coming at them. Oh boy. All right. Well, let's try and get to one more topic. Guns and SSO officers off duty. What's the deal? Earlier this month when Christopher uh, Dorner went on a rampage throughout Southern California targeting officers, there was about 300 special officers here in Orange County that were extremely paranoid. Uh, earlier in the year, uh, the uh, Sheriff's Department restricted their ability to carry concealed weapons. Uh, these 300 officers or so, you'll see them at courts, the jails, the airport. They're uh, typically the people that still have all kinds of uh, peace officer uh, duties. But because of a, a twist that happened where the Sheriff's Department wasn't properly giving them training, a statewide commission advised them that they had to beef that up in order to keep the ability to carry concealed weapons. Sheriff's officials basically decided not to do that. Uh, we here to save some money on training. However, when the Dorner uh, rampage came out, uh, it really hit them hard and they're negotiating it right now as we speak. All right, very good. Thanks, Roberto. We'll see you again next week.